Hey, what's going on YouTube? Gary here, GZ Duels, here to bring you guys a deck profile by viewer request of Six Samurai, but in an anti-meta interpretation. So the anti-meta element, of course, as you can see here, we main deck uh, Imperial Iron Wall. So with uh, further ado, let me just get into a deck profile. For the monsters, we have two Effect Veiler, two uh, Elder of the Six Samurai, three Kage Musha of the Six Samurai, one Nishi, two Kageki, three Kizan, one Shien Squire, and one Zanji. We only run like 15 monsters. Uh, for the spells, we have Asceticism, three of those, uh, Gateway, one of those, uh, three Magnum Shields, one Monster Reborn, one Reinforcement of the Army, two Shien, Do uh, Shien Dojo, and uh, three Shien Smoke Signal, uh, three Six Samurai United, and three Upstar Goblin. For the traps, we have three Fiendish Chain and two main deck uh, Imperial Iron Wall. Side deck, uh, we have two Kaiku, three Max C, three uh, MS, uh, Mystical Space Typhoon, three Anti Spell Fragrance, uh, the third uh, Imperial Iron Wall, and three Soul Drains. For the extra deck, we have Catastor, Shien, Barkion, Beast, Nitria, uh, sorry, they're Nitria Beast, uh, of course, uh, Abyss Dweller, Diamond Darwolf, Cowboy, uh, Gemini Pearl, Heroic Champion Gandiva, uh, MX Saber Invoker, uh, Mace Stroke, Acid Golem, Black Ship of Corn, Shadow of the Six Samurai, and also Zen Mains. Okay, so let me talk about why I wanted to play the deck this way. First of all, my opponent, uh, my uh, viewer, suggested that you know he's going to think about Six Samurai in the ter in terms of being an anti-meta deck. Six Samurai are also also about control. You know, Shien gets to negate things, it gets to choose to negate things, and you have like it's supposed to be a traditionally back row heavy deck. And if you add in Imperial Iron Wall, then you can really limit what your opponent can do if your opponent is a prophecy player or a dragon ruler player. So I thought that was a really Really good idea but you know in order to play this in order to make the deck fast in order to draw into these things then you can't really just sit on your mirror force or your uh, uh, your heavy storm not, not mirror force your mirror force and your bottomless trap holes or your torrential tributes you can't just sit on those and you wait for your your chance at drawing this so I decided I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna put it in the framework of my Samurai Turbo deck so you have three uh, six Samurai United you have three upstar goblins and you can search a whole lot with your deck of uh, with these asceticism and dojos and you can search your deck with Rhoda reinforcement of the army of course and these uh, smoke signals so I'm thinking you know as, as long as you shrink the deck and you get to draw into more cards you can draw into Imperial Iron Wall you can draw into these anti measures anti meta measures that you side in uh, more frequently so that's the way I approach this deck. And now I want to talk about three ways, you know, your opponent can get rid of a monster, uh, especially Xi'an, three ways that your opponent can get rid of this Xi'an, and three ways in which Xi'an can be protected. And this deck basically tries to make Xi'an invulnerable to anything. So the three ways your opponent can get rid of Xi'an is one, by attacking over it and destroying it by battle with a bigger monster. Two, by, you know, using spell or traps in order to try to destroy Xi'an one for one. Um, three, you can destroy Xi'an by using monster effects like Raikou and all that stuff. Okay, so of the first one, first weakness, you know, being destroyed by battle, Xi'an is already really good against that. Xi'an's own effect, if you have a face up, other face up six samurai monster, when Xi'an's about to get destroyed, you know, whether by battle or by card effect, then you can actually destroy that monster instead. So right away, you have some sort of protection with other six samurais. You can send another one to die instead of for Xi'an. Next, if you think about it, we have a uh, Magnum Shield. Under Magnum Shield, Xi'an's attack points gets increased to 3,900 attack. Now, for any average monster, if you're not playing Malefics, for any average monster, that's too much of a too high of an attack in order to get rid of. So you know your Xi'an is protected from being destroyed by battle because simply because it has a high attack as well. Thirdly, if your opponent's monster is like a really high attack monster and uh, it has an effect, you can choose to fiendish chain it, prevent it from being uh, from attacking Xi'an at all. So Xi'an being uh, destroyed by battle, this is quite impossible under the current setup of this deck. Okay, and uh, not to mention, we, if you draw into Xi'an Squire, you can pitch Xi'an Squire, Xi'an Squire, and your six samurai monster. For example, Xi'an won't get destroyed by battle that turn. Okay, the second way in which an opponent can get rid of Xi'an is by using Spell or Trap effects. So Spell or Trap effects, you know, if you attack, your opponent activates Mirror Force, your opponent tries to play Compulsory, your opponent tries to play Bottomless Trap Hole when you summon Xi'an, uh, all of those things. Now, if that happens, Xi'an already has an inherent protection, like I said. Xi'an can, you know, once per turn, negate a Spell or Trap card during either player's turn. So that's really good. If you attack, your opponent activates Mirror Force, you say Negate. Your opponent's turn, he activates Dark Hole, you say negate. But, you know, 
uh, that's not to say that you know it's completely invulnerable to spell or traps. Of course, your opponent can be smart. You know, you, you attack, he activates compulse, you negate, and then he activates mirror force, destroying the rest of your monsters. So that could happen. And uh, if he's playing smart, he'll do that. But if you think about it, like I said, you know, six tower machine already has unity. If you have a face-up Kizan on the field, and you have a face-up Six Samurai Xian, and your opponent activates Dark Hole, you can choose not to negate that Dark Hole. Because the two Six Samurai monsters are being destroyed at the same time, you can try to activate Xian's effect, and then choose the Kizan, because it's not destroyed yet. Xian and Kizan are destroyed at the same time. So you can select Kizan, and your effect from Xian will be chaining two, and Xian's effect will go out first. Uh, uh, go off first, thus destroying the Kizan, and his Dark Hole tries to destroy Xian. Xian cannot be destroyed by card effects this turn, and everything's fine. You just lose the Kizan, he used the Dark Hole, and you can still negate traps and spells further on for the rest of this turn. So as long as you play smart, I think that, you know, Xian with his own inherent effect can stop it from being destroyed by a spell of traps. Plus, we're in a format where, you know, back row isn't that important anymore. Not a lot of uh, decks, uh, top decks play, you know, uh, you know, all of those spell of traps and uh, anti meta measures, so you don't really have to worry about it. And thirdly, you know, Xian can be get, gotten rid of by monster effects like Ryko, uh, like, you know, Snowman Eater and all that stuff. And, you know, your opponent might have, you know, some pesky monster effects that uh, really uh, threatens your Xian. So if your opponent activates uh, the Rescue Rabbits effect, then, you know, he can go into something like Gem Knight Pearl, tries to attack over Xian, then, you know, it can potentially threaten the uh, existence of Xian. So what you do is you play two effect Veiler in your hand, so you can throw them away at your leisure to get rid of pesky monster effects, or you can use a uh, or you can use Phoenix Chain. So, you know, if your opponent activates an effect that would uh, really hurt your Xi'an, then you can use Phoenix Chain on them. Like, look, if your opponent set Raikou and you have a Xi'an on the field, don't attack into it. Like, I wouldn't attack into a face down monster with my Xi'an. What I would do is I would summon another six armor monster. Okay, summon another six armor monster. Now then attack with Xi'an, with that monster first. And if it's a Raikou, and Raikou of course is trying to get rid of Xi'an, then you can use Xi'an's effect, destroy that monster, the six armor monster you summon, instead of itself. And since you didn't attack with Xi'an, use the other six armor monster to attack the face down monster to prompt the effect activation, you can still attack directly with Xi'an. So that's how I would play around monster effects to try to get rid of Xi'an. So as long as you play smart, you have Phoenix Chain, you have two effect veilers, and uh, when your opponent tries to act, try to be smart, try to activate uh, effects in the graveyard, you have Soul Drain, then you know, you are in a pretty good position to still win and protect your Xi'an. So everything in this deck is about protecting the Xi'an, gaining board control, and uh, winning against your opponent who doesn't play fair by activating anti-meta measures. Okay, so that's it for the main deck. I really don't want to talk about anything more except for, you know, the card choices. Over here, this interesting card, you know, uh, Magnum Shield, I've talked about it countless times. I just raised it to three because I feel like it's an important aspect to uh, saving Xi'an by boosting its own attack. Okay, for the side deck, we run two Kaiku. I don't need to tell you guys how good Kaiku is. You summon Kaiku, you turn off the Fate for a Prophecy player, you turn off the uh, dragons from being banished in order to special summon other big dragons. So, you know, Kaiku is definitely good. Uh, we run three Maxi. The, the rationale behind uh, three Maxi and not even maining Maxi is this. If my opponent special summons, then good. I'm going to side in all three of my Maxis so that, you know, I can draw into more cards, more resources to deal with whatever they put up on the board. But inherently, I don't know if they special summon a lot. If I'm facing against, you know, Ophion, and, you know, they only special summon, really special summon just once, then I'd rather, you know, go with the choice of Upstar Goblin. In this way, you know, you can uh, always draw a card, whereas Maxi, you can draw a card, but it's really iffy, and you would want to draw into a card right away. So three Maxi, just in case the other deck is faster than yours. Uh, three Mystical Space Typhoon, just in case the other deck is playing a lot of uh, back row. This also helps protect Xi'an from being destroyed by spell or trap effects. And three Anti-Spell Fragrance, this card just kills prophecies. Uh, the third... Uh, um, Imperial Iron Wall, I didn't feel like 3 was really necessary in the main deck, so, uh, simply because, you know, 2 is good, you can always draw into it because this deck shrinks itself a lot, and uh, 3 is just when you really know that you need this in order to hurt the opponent's deck, like you're playing against dragons, you're playing against prophecy, that's when you sign in the third one, and Soul Drain, just for those decks that have graveyard effects, I found out that, you know, that's one of the uh, downfalls of this deck. I was playing against one of my subscribers and he was playing um, Machina Fortress and he was using the graveyard effect of Machina Fortress, you know, to destroy cards after being destroyed by battle and he was gaining a lot of advantage that way. So I decided I'm going to side in Soul Drain and that really works. 
Uh, for the extra deck, there's nothing really much to say except for Heroic Champion Gandiva. Like I said, I've praised Gandiva all the time. You know, if you think about it, Gandiva is really good. Uh, as a Madolche player, uh, I hate to see my opponent go first turn Gandiva. Okay, your turn. So that now when I summon like Hoot Cake, when I summon all of that stuff, I really can't go off. It prevents me from special summoning level 4 or lower monsters. I can't imagine, like, I simply can't imagine a, a, an Ophion deck, like an Eel Swarm deck with uh, Ophion plus Heroic Champion Gandiva. If, if, it's, if it's possible to get Heroic Champion Gandiva plus Ophion on the field, then you might as well surrender if you don't have a Dark Hole because. Really, you can't special summon big monsters level 5 or higher, and you can't special summon level 4 or lower monsters. <laughs> so Heroic Champion Gandiva, really good choice. Especially you can go into it with, you know, Kizans and Sanjis and Inishi. So that's all I really have to say about this deck. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop in the comment section down below. I currently do have a lot of decks on backlog. I'm trying to uh, get through all of your requests, so forgive me if I take a while. Uh, what I'm going to do is for each deck profile, I'm going to for each deck request, I'm going to do a couple of duels, uh, show you guys maybe an interesting duel or two, and then I'm just going to give you guys my interpretation of the deck um, because I, there's a lot of uh, recommendations, a lot of a lot of suggestions, so I want to get rid of. I, I want to like get through them as fast as possible for you guys. So this is Gary GC Duels signing out.